Hello and thank you to everyone who's liked and commented on part one. In this part I'm going to cover some of the features that people have been asking to see next, like adding colour to the map and randomly placing objects. To begin with we want to add colour to our map depending on its height. So this project has a gradient property, a shader compatible with universal render pipeline and a material for applying that shader to. You can see in the script that we have our gradient property. It's set to private, but we do have serialized field on it, so we can still edit it in the inspector. To do that, you need to look at your script, go to gradient, and then create and choose a preset. Again, at the bottom, I've got sand, grass in the middle, and then dirt for the top of the mountains. Shaders are a set of rules for how 3D objects should be appearing in our game, like whether they're shiny and smooth or rough and dull. Unity uses a thing called Shader Graph that lets you visually write these instructions with no prior coding knowledge. The shader and the material for this project is in the repo, but to create the shader yourself, you want to right click on the projects area, create, shader, and then we want to use the universal render pipeline and lit shader graph. Once you've opened the shader graph, right click inside the tab, create node and type vertex color. And once you've added that, you want to change the out into the base color. So now we need to create a material, right click on the projects tab, create material. And then we just want to drag our new shader onto the material and we can use that for the terrain. So now select your mesh, drag the material over to the inspector. And now we can programmatically set the color of those vertices. Now in our script, the color map function is called after creating the triangles and before updating the mesh. Inside it, we've instantiated an array of colors by setting it to the length of the number of vertices we have. We're then getting the color from our gradient property that we created earlier and filling each vertex in the array. In the update mesh method, we're then setting the mesh.colors to the colors that we've created. On to randomly placing objects, since we have an array of all our vertices, we can define where we want to place the objects using that. We essentially loop through all of our vertices, check its position in the game, create some rules for what heights we want the objects to spawn between, and then roll for a chance for one of the random objects in our object array to spawn on that vertex. This is a really simple solution though, so if you are looking for something more sophisticated, maybe I can do a part 3 in the future. Also, remember to define what objects that you want to instantiate. Make sure you add the prefabs to the object list in the inspector. Those objects will need a script attached to them in order to raycast and find the terrain. Raycasting is essentially like reaching an infinitely long arm out and reporting the first thing that it touches. The script for our instantiated objects has a function called findLand, and all this is doing is shooting that raycast downwards from where it's instantiated. Once it finds the terrain, it'll set its transform position there, but if it can't find anything south, it'll skip to the else clause and see if anything exists above it. So this is how your end result may end up looking. If you have any other questions on what else we do on this channel, then please check out the Discord link and subscribe. Also, if you would like me to cover another topic related or not to procedural generation, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.